As the sun set behind the International Space Station, the Dragon capsule inched ever closer to docking. We should have some uh, history made here in the next several minutes. The SpaceX Dragon is the first ever commercial vessel to visit the space station. At Mission Control in Houston, Texas, there was caution as it approached. A collision at 28,000 kilometers per hour would be disastrous. Station Houston, you have a go for capture. But as the Canadian-built robotic arm reached out, the Dragon capsule connected with ease. Uh, Houston Station, looks like we got us a dragon by the tail. The Dragon is delivering a half ton of supplies to the International Space Station. Since the U.S. retired its shuttles, it's been relying on Russian, Japanese and European cargo ships. Those burn up on re-entry. The Dragon's designed to safely re-enter the Earth's atmosphere and be reused. We're handing off to the private sector our transportation to the International Space Station so that NASA can focus on what we do best exploring even deeper into our solar system. The Dragon capsule is scheduled to leave on Thursday, but for now it will stay docked so it can be loaded with science experiments and equipment. Uh, approach and capture procedure complete. And if all goes well with the remainder of Dragon's test two, flight, four, this Dragon historic option. mission is expected to open the door for astronauts to ride in ahead. the capsule by 2015. You, Kimberly Helkett, uh, Al Jazeera. Now the world's biggest and most advanced radio telescope will be split between three countries that wanted to host the project. South Africa got the nod as did a joint bid by Australia and New Zealand. The telescope will be able to detect signs of extraterrestrial life in the far corners of the universe. Al Jazeera's Tiny Page has more from Cape Town. The decision to split the Square Kilometre Array, or SKA, has come after months of negotiation and lobbying. South Africa was actually deemed the preferred site, but because Australia has put so much investment already in it, it's been decided that they will share it. They say this will not compromise in any way the science that they are able to glean from this gigantic telescope. However, it will increase the cost. They don't know exactly by how much, but it, it, the original contract, at least, was for two billion US dollars, so it's going to be a massive investment. Most of the telescopes, about two-thirds of them, about 3,000 in total, will be in South Africa, so it's a huge credit to the team here who have been working on this for some nine years now. It's going to be a boost to the economy, to construction, engineering, IT, and of course it'll put Africa on the cutting edge of astronomy and science. So what are they hoping to learn? Well basically, the radio telescope can see much further into space than an optical one, so it can see further and farther back in time. They think it will reveal the secrets to the universe, exactly what happened in the aftermath of the Big Bang, and they think it will provide the best opportunity yet for discovering whether life is out there.